good evening, good evening. I'm Pastor Gary Bank here at Shallow Baptist Church in Port Norris and Wyland. One church in two locations, where our senior pastor is Dr. Reverend James Allen Duncan. We want to welcome you to our Bible study class Wednesday night. Can we give the Lord a praise? I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because this is the day that the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. At this time, I want you to go get your family, your friends, get on Facebook, get on YouTube, our SBC Praise. Join us, please, because there's a word from the Lord just for you tonight. And I'm excited about what God is going to do here. And I just pray right now. I'm going to do a quick prayer. We're going to go right into our lesson. The lesson has been designed from God. I heard from the Lord to give you a word that will encourage you right where you are. Can we give the Lord a praise real quick? Amen, amen. Let us bow. Eternal God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Lord, for being God all by yourself. Thank you for being merciful and gracious to us. Lord, you have kept us through danger, seen and unseen. Lord, we don't went through trying time, but somehow, some way, Lord, we made it through, all because of your grace. So, Lord, tonight I ask that you would be with me. Lord, guide me, lead me, protect me, hide me in your word. Lord, as we break bread together with my brothers and sisters, Lord, we pray that we have a rejoiced time in the Lord. Lord, we pray that what we do tonight, that you get all the glory and all the honor. Can we give the Lord a praise right where you are? I'm excited. We, we're going to move right on. And I just have a word that I believe that everybody can relate to. And the title of the message tonight, it is titled, It's Not What It Looks Like. Can you say that with me? It's not what it looks like. It's not over. Somebody out there thought their life was over because of what they're experiencing and the situation they might be currently in right now. But I come to tell you, the God that I serve, the God that you serve, sent a word from heaven and said, tell my people it is not over. Because great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we have so much to be thankful for. And if we know who our Lord and Savior is, we realize the power that we possess in him. We have nothing to worry about. It is not over. It is not what it looks like. The scripture, our foundation scripture tonight is going to be from Luke chapter 23. And I just got a little quick subtitle I want to give you real quick. I just want to read this for you real quick. And we're going to dig deeper as we go along in the class. But I'm going to start with this. Luke 23, 42. And he said unto Jesus, these are the two thieves that were hanging on the cross. One of the thieves that was hanging on the cross said these words. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou cometh into thy kingdom. It not, it's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. Here's a picture, if you can see a vivid picture of Jesus hanging in between two thieves. One of the thieves said, if you be God, if you be what they say you are, or you say you were, come down, rescue yourself, and rescue me. But the other thief said, Lord, when you get into your kingdom, Lord, remember me. And the reason why I put this picture up because I want everybody to take a look because somebody said, what is he preaching, a, a Good Friday message? The Bible, God instructed us to preach the gospel in season and out of season. This is a part of the gospel that we don't like to talk about much but during the holidays, during Good Friday service, during Easter. But the gospel, the word of God, the demonstration, the price that he paid for us is the reason why we need to be excited even though it looked bad. Even though it seems like the world had failed, or God had failed the world, or Jesus Christ had failed the world, you got to know in your spirit, it's not what it looks like. It was a horrible, gruesome moment. 
Our Lord and Savior had thorns placed on his head. His side was pierced. He was whipped and beaten all night long. Marched from judgment hall to judgment. You know the story. But he had one thing in mind. He had me and you on his mind. And before we go into this chapter, as we read a little bit more, because I need you to see through the word of God what our Lord and Savior actually went through. But before we reenact what he went through or talk about what he went through, first of all, you got to know as believers. I'm talking to believers tonight. I pray that somebody else say will be on watching us and the Lord will prick your heart and draw you closer to him. Because the Bible says no man coming to him unless he first wrong. We know what the power of God can do. But I want to encourage believers that, that thought it was over. The ones that accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. You went through a situation. You got a bad report from the doctor. You might have lost your job. You might have had marriage issues or a struggle with your relationship. Or you have anxiety and depression because of a heavy weight that comes on you. I come to talk to you tonight Say it's not over. It's never over. When Jesus, Jesus is placed in the center, just like you see on this picture, Jesus is in the center of these two thieves. Whenever you place Jesus in the center of your situation, you best believe he's going to change the situation. Somebody's life is going to be changed. Can we give the Lord a praise right there? You must first know who you are in Christ. Before I get to the text, there's some things I need to lay. I need to lay out for believers a biblical foundation. So you will have something to stand on, rest on, keep in your heart, something you can go to. And you need to know who you are in Christ. You need to know who he is. You need to know the purpose of why he came. You must first know who you are in Christ. John had to let us know, St. John chapter 15, verse 16. He had to let us know that, first of all, we did not choose him. You didn't choose Christ. You didn't wake up one morning and say, I want to be saved. I want, I want my life right. I want God in my family. I want God in my children's life. You didn't wake up on that. You woke up every day sinning. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. If anything, we learned how to do a sin and be disobedient. But God seen something in us. Jesus seen something in us that he knew we could be soldiers marching in the army. We could be that example. We could be one of our mouthpiece for him. We can be that instrument, that tool that he would use to be able to put forth his word, to be able to be that light shining in the midst of darkness. He said in this text, this chapter, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you so that you might go forth and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Somebody say last. Meaning what, if you accept Jesus Christ, you're going to say and you spend time in the Word and find a good Bible-believing church that's preaching the gospel and teaching the gospel, the true gospel. I'm talking about the holistic gospel. Not the, you know, name and claim. I'm not talking about that type of gospel. I'm talking about the gospel that tells you you're going to go through these things. You're going to go through some problems. You're going to go through some St. John chapter 16, verse 33. In this life, you're going to have some trials and tribulations. You're going to suffer some things. But be a good cheer. Why? Because I have overcome. Christ said he overcame. So since he overcome and we network with him and we join in with him, we have nothing to fear if we trust in him. And though we go through the shadow of the valley of death, I have nothing to fear because thou with me, my rod, my staff, you comfort me in a time of trouble. So that whatsoever you ask in my name, in my Father's name, you, he will give it unto you, and I am selected by him. That's one thing you need to think about. He chose me. Can, can, can you think about that for a moment? Out of all the million, billion people in the world, he chose me. And he chose me for a purpose, his purpose. Even though we might not know fully what our purpose is, many have been in church all their life and don't know what their purpose is. My purpose is, I know what my purpose is. God has gifted me to use this vessel in my mouth. 
He has given me this body to be an example. I might fail sometime. I might mess up. But I know I have a Savior that I can go to and fall on my knees and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. He said in uh, 1 John 1 and 9, if I confess my fault, my sins unto him, he is faithful. Man, I may not be faithful. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> but he said, I am faithful and just to cleanse you from all your unrighteousness, all your sins. That's power. That's the love of God. And he chose me. Lord have mercy. His purpose, Jesus' purpose, and you know, 1 John 3 and 5 says, and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. This, this was his purpose. This is the reason why Jesus came and hung on the cross. He came and was manifested to take away our sins. In him, he had no sin. He became sin. He took on the burdens. He took on us. He paid the price. He put his life up for ransom for us. That's why he came. It looked bad, him hanging on the cross. He looked defeated, hanging on the cross. It looked like the enemy had won. It looked like Satan had destroyed him and finally got his vengeance. But I come to tell you, that wasn't the end of the story. Jesus had another chapter waiting. Because who God is blessed. He poured out himself into his son, Jesus. And he walked among us. St. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. We know that. It became flesh. The 14th verse. became flesh and dwelt among us. His purpose was to seek. Luke 19 10. You see it right here. For the Son of Man. He called himself the Son of Man in this chapter. Is come to seek and to save those who are lost. I know somebody said, Pastor Pat, where are you going? I put that picture up there of Jesus on the cross because I wanted to show you a picture how it, it can look so bad. It can look like it's over for you. It can look like the enemy has won. Look like the enemy has put his foot on your neck and you cannot breathe. But I come to tell you that the story is not over. If you know who you are in Christ and you know the power of the God that called you and selected you and chose you and brought you out of darkness and to the marvelous light. If you know who, the, who you are in Christ and who he is, the devil in hell cannot stop you from moving forward. Can't stop you from being that light. Can't stop you from being that testimony or that witness to be able to change somebody else's life. Yes, he puts you on that job for a reason. Not to be mean and contagious. He put you on that job to be a light for him. He knew that you would speak when nobody else would speak. He knew if there's any injustice, anybody being treated wrong, nobody else might speak up. But God knew he chose you. He said, I place you in this position to make a difference. And that's what happened. We get challenged in life. We go through some trials and tribulations that get so rough that we look like, I'm not winning. Seems like I'm losing this battle. Every time I seem like I'm taking two steps forward, the enemy pushed me two steps back. Because there's some things that's going on in our natural body. We're rustling with our spirit man. And our natural man seems to be winning at times. Sometimes we yield to the flesh because our flesh always desires the things that are not good. Sometimes we enjoy those things. Eating too much. Bloody. That could be a sin. Who don't like to eat? I love to eat. Also love to complain. I also love to do some other things. I'm not going to mention. These are things we wrestle with. And we think just because we get saved, those images, no desires don't go away. No, they won't. You got to feed yourself with the Word of God. You got to know who you are in Christ. You got to know his word is true, and his word will not return unto him void. You got to know that he got all power in his hand. You got to know that he gave you power to speak to the enemy and to change your situation. You got to know who you are. It's not what it looks like. It looks bad to you. It feels bad. And it is true. You are hurting. You are depressed. 
But the word of God, the true word of God, delivered and received, will bring you out of every situation. I wish I had a witness in here. I wish somebody watch me right now and we will stand up right now and give the Lord praise for what I just said. The Lord will bless you if you learn to wrap your spirit, your mind, your thought process, your actions around this word and keep walking by faith. Can I get an amen in here? No man has control over his own life. No man do. But Jesus did. In John chapter 10, verse 8, I love this chapter here. St. John chapter 10, verse 8. He said, Jesus said, no man <laughs> take it from me. No man take of my life. No man. But I lay it down myself. When they arrested him in the garden, when Judas had betrayed him with a kiss, and they said, are you him, the one that we were looking for? And he said, I am he. The power that Jesus possessed called them to all fall back. Now that's power. He was letting them know right then and there. He was letting the readers know. He was letting you and I know through the word of God. He was painting a picture that it wasn't over. I got a bigger plan. He said, this body is going to be turned and, and it's going to be buried for three days. Look, I'm riding. Right. This temple. Jesus said he was a temple. He said it's going to be torn out. To three days, but I'm gonna rise it up again. And they couldn't understand because even they couldn't believe what he was talking about because they couldn't see it. It's not like what you think. Sometimes your life could be so rough and it seem like it's over. But Jesus, I got a bigger plan. But you gotta go through. You gotta go through some pain. You gotta go through some suffering. He said, No man take it from me, but I lay it down myself. Because I have a power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. Lord have mercy. He said, this is a commandment I have received from my Father. I have authority to lay this down. We already have worked over the plans, a house for the workout. There's nobody else. There's no bullock. There's no goat. There's no sacrifice can take the place that can redeem man back from the sin that Adam had brought into the world. No, no, nobody can bring him back. Nobody but the Savior. Which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God poured himself into man, came flesh, and dwelt among us. That was the only thing that could take up the ransom price for us. He said, I receive commandments from my Father, which is in heaven. Because of Christ, 2 Corinthians 2, 5, 21, it says, for he made himself who knew no sin. I know what I'm going. Just be patient with me here. Because one thing as believers and saints of God, we want to believe what the world is saying. We want to believe what we see. I'm not saying it's not true what you see. I don't want you to get up there and say, hey, if somebody said, no, they ain't sick, they shouldn't take it back. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, when are you going to start believing in the Lord's report? When the Lord said you were healed, when he said, great is he that is in you, meaning that God lives on the inside of you. When he said you could speak to your mountain or your situation and command it to be moved by faith and you forgive and do everything according to the word of God. He said you can have whatever you ask. How come we can only believe for a short period of time? There's a reason why, because those emotions, those kind of behaviors that we live with, those human behaviors and failures that we have because of what we see and what we believe and what we hear. He said, he made himself, he was made sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. Can I take a minute there? That you have been set right by God. He came on your behalf because there was nothing you could do to fix it. But he came and sacrificed his life. He gave his life a ransom. He took a beating and a price just for you. And we can't say hallelujah. And we can't say thank you, Jesus. Even though our problems may look bad, we can't say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. Lord, you brought me out before. I know you'll bring me out again. We can't stand on this word a little while. It says, have faith in me. He told Peter, no, he was in the garden. He said, I'm going off to pray. Can you stay awake? Question I'm asking, can you stay awake a little while? 
God is going to work out your situation. Trust in Him. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. The reason why I quote that scripture and why I love it so much, because that was my go-to scripture when it looked like my life was over. When it looks like the end was coming. When it looks like my goddaughter, who was seven months old, and they found out she had a, her arteries was pumping blood. Her blood was going flowing the wrong way in her heart, and she was turning blue right before us. And we went to the hospital. My mom called me to come to the hospital to pray over her. Seven months old. And they was trying to get blood out of her. You heard the story before. I, I have to tell these stories because these are the things that make me a believer because God done it for me. He showed up when I didn't have nothing else left. All I had was him. All I could do was throw up my hands and pray to the Lord, help us right now. And she was in Bristol Hospital. I'll never forget. This was, this was years ago. And they couldn't get blood out of her. They was trying to take blood so they could really find out what was going on. Her mother called me and said, Uncle Gary, I need you here. I need you praying. She was over in the next room hysterical. And I'm praying the whole time before I got there. I'm saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, go in that hospital room. I'm talking to somebody here. He said, go in that hospital room. And I need you to look foolish for me. Because the world is watching. I'm talking to a leader right now. Sometimes you got to look foolish for the Lord. They don't understand why we lift our hands and get praise. But he told me to go in there. He told me to read Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord. He said, trust in me. He said, lean not to your own understanding. Don't think like you always think. I need you to think like I put in you. Trust in me with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, everything you do, all your actions, all your functions. All your ways, acknowledge me. Let the world know who I am. And I will direct your path. He said he will make things straight. And I wrestled with it, I was afraid. But then I got the boldness because I kept remembering how God had brought me out when he saved me. I said, Lord, since you changed my life, Lord, I'm going to stand on your word. And I went in that room behind the curtains and I threw my hands up. And the two nurses seen me in there just praising God. Just praising God. Know where I'm going here tonight. It's not what you what it looks like. It looked as bad. They were upset. I heard her mama said, we can't get blood out of this child. They need to take her, take her out to Cooper. They need to get her out of there right away. But the Lord said, look stupid for me. Look crazy for me to the world. They won't understand. But if you throw up my hand, I got a miracle on your ear. Bring your way. And then they will see my power. They will see who I am. But it's going to take believers. It's going to take a Christian. It's going to take somebody who's giving their life to the Lord to not be ashamed of the gospel and the power of our God. I threw my hands up. Begin to pray unto the Lord in front of them. And I heard one of the nurses say, oh my God, we're getting blood. We're getting blood now. They were excited. And all of a sudden, this is how we do it. This is what we got to be careful of, church. This is what we got to be careful of, believers. Sometimes we get big at it and thinking it's us. The Lord told me to do that. I got big at it and started thinking it was me. I said, look what I've done. And I put my hands down and they said the blood stopped. And immediately, immediately, right away, I remember you better cut this out. You better give God all glory. You better put it back in his hands. And I threw my hands up again. And the blood began to flow. And they were able to diagnose properly what was wrong with her. She had three major surgeries. We had to do it in stages. They did it when she was three. They did it when she was eight. They did another when she was 11. She's 16 years old now. And she came to church and gave her life to the Lord and bond. And you mean to tell me if I have thought and said this is what it looked like, it was over, I would have gave up in the hospital room. But I come to tell you now, it's not over. It's not what it looks like because of what Christ did. You got to know who he is. Because of Christ, he came and he made himself sin. So he can erase sin from us. And all we have to do is believe in him because he made us righteous because of what he did. He don't have to go back on the cross. All we have to do is believe. Trust in him. Stand on his word. We have been made righteous. Chapter 7, verse 
up on the chest and say, I am the righteousness of God. Amen. We belong to him. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourself and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Power in the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood he shed on, cross, on the cross. That picture I showed you of Jesus in between the two thieves. It was not over for one of those thieves. Because in the book of Matthew, that same story was told again. And in the book of Matthew, it was written a little bit different. And we're going to go over that a little later. But right now, I want to let you know, we belong to him. Hebrews chapter 9. Neither by the blood of goats or cat. Remember I mentioned that? No sacrifice can take the place of our sins. It only took Christ. It took the shedding of love from our Lord and Savior to be able to redeem us back to God. It says, but by his own blood he entered and once into a holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. My God, my God. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23. Are you listening? I hope y'all listen to the scripture because we like to hear stories. We like to hear yelling and shouting. And but this is what's going to keep you. This is what's going to carry you through the storm. You see what's going on in the world. Shooting of our babies. For running in somebody's yard to fetch a ball and get shot. A little girl. Just heard that story. Not only did she get shot, her dad was trying to help her. He got shot. Then the mother come along and she get shot. A young man, 16 young year old young man, scholar in school, doing well. Even if he was a thug, I don't care if he was a thug, he went to the doorbell and got mistaken, went to the wrong house and got shot. If you don't think we're living in perilous times, something is wrong with you. And you need to hang on to the Word of God because if the Word of God was taken through any trials and tribulation. Because he said, be of good cheer because I brought peace. And if you grab peace through me and through my word, you will have peace. So when you hear somebody reading the scripture, you hear a pastor or anybody reading the scripture, don't just blow it away. So I don't Listen to what's being said. He said, which God had purchased, church, he said, which we have, he had purchased with his own blood. Hebrews chapter 9 and 12, it says, neither by the blood of goats or calves, but by his own blood, he entered into once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. First, um, excuse me, First Corinthians seven twenty three, you are purchased, or you have been bought with a price. But ye, the servants of man, you have been purchased with a price. You got to know. Sometimes you got to blot out. What else going on in the world? I'm thinking about what God did for you. You know you was near death. You've been in the wrong place at the wrong time. And there was nobody but the grace of God that covered you. That drink should have killed you. That drug should have killed you. That car accident should have killed you. But it didn't because of his grace. Because of the blood he purchased. He shed his blood to purchase you. You belong to him. And as believers... Once you grab that in your spirit that I belong to God, the Almighty God, the Creator of heaven and earth, the, the one that nothing exists until He's spoken, man, think, think about that. He chose me. He ordained me. He put something in me, and that I should bear fruit and it shall remain. Meaning it shall continue. That means even when you die, I believe your children will pick it up and carry on that mantle. I believe somebody else is going to carry on somebody in your family, your grandchild. Somebody's going to pick up that mantle and continue to walk forth because God, if God said it, he promised it. 
And when God made a promise, you better believe it's going to come to pass. We got to know that we're sealed, excuse me, sealed which that Holy Spirit a promise. In whom you also trusted after you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit a promise. It was a promise. You sealed. If God shows you, I believe that. I believe that. I believe God make a mistake. I believe we make mistakes when after you choose us. Yeah, we're not perfect. We still can stumble. We still can fall. But I believe when God chooses somebody, he won't choose you. Because he's God. I can unchoose you. I can make a mistake and pick the wrong one. I can say, you know what? I thought he was the one, but he wasn't the one. But God knows all things. Because he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. You've got to know who he is. And you have been purchased by his blood. And you're connected to him. Now you're a son and daughter of him. Your father owned the cattle of a thousand hills. And the hills. And everything under. And everything above it. That's who's on our side. We have something to rejoice about. Hebrew, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 uh, and 14. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, and the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself ransom for all. Uh, he took our place. I'm going to go through this real quick. I need to get to the text real quick. I need to get back to the text. Because I need you to know what I'm building this story on. This first class, i got two more classes. But this class, I want you to know that it's not over. And it's not what it looks like. And I want to, matter of fact, I'm going to go to it right now. We're going to talk about the resurrection power. Let's go back to the text. Our text is Luke chapter 23. And we'll begin at verse 32. Here's a story. Here's a picture you've seen from, from the beginning. This is what I wanted to let you know. It's not what it looks like. Now we get to verse 32. Two other men, both criminals, they were thieves, were also let out with him. They were with Jesus Christ to be executed. And when they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there along with these two thieves. The Bible says one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And they divided, he was a fulfiller being fulfilled. They divided up his clothes and cast lots for it. Jesus fulfilling, even on the cross, he was fulfilling. That was rich, written before time. Luke 23, uh, 35, the people stood watching. The church folk, the rulers, they were even sneering on him. And they said, he saved others. He opened blind eyes. Am I talking to somebody here? Remember the Jesus. He opened blind eyes. He did a miracle for you. Y'all seen it. You seen what he was able to do. And you said, Lord, since you can do that, they said, since you can do that, they said, he saved others. Let him save himself. If he be God, the Messiah, the chosen one. They would make our mockery, smear his name. Kick it back in. It didn't look good. But it's not what it looks like. The soldiers even joined in. Also came unto him to mock him. And they offered unto him wine and vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, like you say you are, like people say you are, Save yourself. Verse 38. There was a written notice about him on top of him saying, This is the king of the Jews. Said, so This is the one y'all chose. Y'all chose this one. Look at it. Where's his power at? When are when, when he, when he going to show us a miracle? King Herod and Pilate. Both Herod, King Herod couldn't wait to see him. Remember he went from Judah Hall to Judah Hall? King Herod couldn't wait to see him. He said, I, I want to see him perform a miracle. Taunting our Savior. Looked at man because he was a man with riches. He was a man with power. He said, who is supposed to take over this throne? Who is supposed to take over this region? Ain't nobody powerful than me. Show me something. 
And when they seen Jesus, Pilate and Moses, they found no fault in him. They said, we can't find no fault in him. All he did was help people. All he did was got behind him and start praising him. And you're afraid of the praise? This man can't take my kingdom. They couldn't even see the power he possessed. They thought it was all risk of you. No matter what you're going through life, you won't always have somebody putting you down. You're going to always have somebody talking about you saying, you ain't all that. You ain't that holy. Your faith ain't that strong. But Jesus stayed on course. He stayed focused on what his father had sent him to do. And as believers, that's what we have to do. We have to stay focused. God brought us out of darkness to the marvelous light. We got to stay in the light. It's by staying connected to him. When he tells us to speak, we need to speak. We need to encourage our brothers and sisters. Like Galatians chapter 6. When you fall into a fall. When your brother falls into a fall, strengthen him. Because you might soon fall into a fall. We can't get too holy when we keep our mouth shut. I, I want to say something real quick here about politics. I don't like talking about politics too much. But my man Al Sharp. Sharp I'm going to tell you, I didn't like Al Sharp. I'll be honest with you. I didn't like the, the fat album, sure. And the reason why I didn't like it because it sounded like he had a lot of mouth. He was always talking. And the one thing that gained my respect with Al Sharpton was his consistency. He didn't mind getting into the fire. And I remember they interviewed him one time. I forget what, what network was on, but he finally spoke his heart. He said, I know people didn't like me. I, didn't know, they, I know they didn't care about me because I had a big mouth. I would start trouble. Yes, I would. I would make some noise. If there was some injustice going on, he said, I would show up. He said, but I didn't show up on my own. He said, people called me because when they got in trouble, they needed a voice. I'm talking to somebody here. When you get in trouble, you need somebody to represent you. Somebody who's not afraid to open their mouth and to stand up against what's wrong. And that's the problem as believers. We have all of this work. We have all this protection. I'm not trying to tell you to get in the line, in, in the line of fire. I'm not trying to tell you to be some hero or trying to rescue somebody. But you have a treasure in the Word of God that possesses power and strength. And if we know how to use it, and we know that we have been given that authority, and all we have to do is activate our faith and believe in those things we can't see, God can turn our situation around. Al said, but y'all called me. Because when you felt like you didn't have a voice, you called on somebody who would make a noise. He said, I forgive you. He said, but I had to keep doing what God instructed me to do. No matter if I got talked about. No matter if I had people spit on me and throw things at me. He said, I had to continue walking in the gift of God. That, that changed my view of my personality, not personality, but my view of him and what I think about him now. Now when he speak, look at all the people who lost loved ones and they call on him to minister over their family, their loved one. That shows dedication and commitment and strength. You might not like him now, but I learned to like him. I learned to respect him. And that's what we have to do with the word. The word is consistent. It validates his own self. It has so much strength and power that if you live long enough, you'll see it revealed. There was written on the king of the Jew, and one of the criminals who hung there was hurling insults at Jesus. One of the thieves in this chapter, Luke chapter 23, it said he was hurling insults as well. Are you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. Verse 40. But the other criminal rebuked him and said, Don't you fear God? He said, Since you are under the same sentence, which is death, we are punished justly. We deserve this. We were thieves. We did something wrong. And we get exactly what we deserve. But this man has done nothing. He has done nothing wrong and receiving the same punishment as us. Don't you fear him? And he made a statement. So when you get to, he turned over to Jesus and said, when you get to your kingdom, remember me. And it doesn't say 
He repented. But I believe that was repent. He acknowledged about something he had heard. The Bible said faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. In, in the book of Matthew, in the book of Matthew, if I can get there real quick. Come on, click it. I don't have it. But in the book of Matthew, there's another version of the same story. And the Bible reads that both of them were hurled insults, saying, if you be God, come down. But in Luke chapter 23, it says one of them, I believe the one that said, Lord, when you get into your kingdom, remember me, had a change of heart. And sometimes when you're going through a bad situation, or you feel like your life is over, and you know that God had brought you out before. You were reminded about how God brought you out then, and you know He'll bring you out again. And sometimes we have a change of heart. And quickly, I believe the, the thief that said, Lord, remember me. I believe He said, Lord, forgive me for doubting you. I heard about you. Open up blind eye. I might not make it off this cross. I'm not even asking to come off this cross. I deserve to die. But when you get to your kingdom, because of what I heard of you, he didn't even have to see it. He probably was somewhere still. Taking something that didn't belong to him. But when he got on that cross and he was at his lowest moment, when he thought it was over, he made a choice. He made a decision to say, Lord, remember me. And I can see that right now as him saying, Lord, forgive me for everything I have stolen. I confess my sins of I acknowledge you as Savior and Lord. Just remember me. And what, I, what intrigued me so bad about what Jesus said, what impressed me so much, Jesus still had to carry out his assignment. But Jesus stopped and looked at him and said, he said, this day, yep, come on, come on, come on, come on. I, I need somebody praying with me right now. He said, this day. Now, I don't want to I don't want to change scripture. I don't want to rewrite it. I'm not going to do that. I'm afraid to do that. But all I can imagine is because he's God. He said, this day you shall be with me in paradise. I believe before he went to hell, he made a quick stop when the thief died on the cross. Jesus made a quick stop in paradise and kept his promise. And if he could keep a promise to a thief, who deserved to die, who were living in sin. What about you? Have you allowed what you see to take over your mind and spirit when you believe what you see instead of what the Word says? The Word is powerful and sharper than any two of its word. The believers, we got to get up with our bullhorn and we got to begin to pronounce the Word of God and let them know the power of His love his forgiveness of our sins and how deep his love is for us. He will go through the muck in the morning and pull us out. And that's something to be excited about. I don't ain't got much time. You have time I want to know. And, but I want to express to you tonight it's not what it looks like. It's not over. I got a couple things I want to share with you that we're going to be going over next week. And it's going to pick up right with this. We're going to continue with this story. Both criminals said the same thing. But one had a change of heart. I'm asking you tonight to have a change of heart. And do what Christ did. His observation. What he was able to see that was going around in his region. He was able to discern a person's heart. The other thief didn't choose. He was still arrogant. So God's observation, your observation of your situation is not like God's. How God sees things is different. I need to let you know. His observation is different. Observation is the action or the process of observing something or someone carefully in order to gain information. Uh, your remarks, your thoughts, your surveillance, what you see, your state, what you say, and your comments. Of your observation. What do you see? How do you handle it? How do you perceive it? God's view of us is different from our view of us. That's why I said it's not what you see. What you see is not it. 
Does God see something better? God's observation. Isaiah 55 explains it. He said, 55, 8, 9, he said, but well, my thoughts are not like your thoughts. I'm going to stop right there. Stop trying to outthink God. You can't. He said, your thoughts are not like mine. Neither are your ways like mine. Stop trying to act like you got it. That you don't make no mistakes. Stop fooling people. Tell them the truth. Anybody want to sit there and hear how glorious you are when you know you wrestle each and every day? Tell the truth. You don't need to co-sign and help God's work. That's one thing I had to learn as a believer. Sometimes we want to overemphasize things. We want to take things to another level. Lord said, I don't need you to co-sign for me. My word goes out. My word speaks for me. I don't need you back up. I just need you to be truthful about yourself. If you struggle, tell me when you struggle. But let them also know who you're holding on to, who you run to, who you depend on, where you got it from. He said, your ways are not like mine, declared the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. Amen? It's not over. It's not what it looks like. Jairus, thought it was when his daughter was pronounced dead after he came seeking for Jesus to come and pray for his daughter. Then a messenger come along and said, Jairus, it's too late, your daughter's dead. Jairus thought it was over. Jesus said, she's not dead, she's just sleeping. And Jesus went and healed Jairus' daughter. The woman with issue of blood, same thing. She thought it was over. Twelve years of hemorrhaging. Twelve years. Same issue. Same pain. People distance you. Calling out your name. Calling you everything but a child of God. And you're still seeking God. Babe. Hold on. Jesus is in the room. She's seen Jesus. And she just thought about if I could just touch. If I could just touch. She moved by faith. If I could just touch his him. I know this thing will change. She won't be sure if it's going to dry up. She just know if I touch the hem of the corner, she said, I know I'll be made whole. She said, I know I'll be able to think different. Maybe I'll be able to think different and carry the situation, but I have a better look at things. I have a better attitude. I'll, my morale will be better. I'll be more encouraged. I'll still be able to smile again. But Jesus made her complete. Jesus turned about and said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith have made thee whole. Hebrews, faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of the things not seen. It's not what it looks like, but by faith it can be. Jesus knew that even though it was a horrible view and horrible picture of him in the middle of of two thieves. But he knew the end game was going to be him going to hell and taking back the keys to death, hell, and the grave so that death had no more sting over those who he had selected. Remember I told you he chose you and we didn't choose him. And he gave you the keys and said, death had no more authority over you. Why are you crying? It ain't over. It ain't over. It ain't over. It's not what it looks like. Jesus seen the difference in the woman that was caught in adultery. He didn't seem like the world said they wanted to stone her. By law, they had every right to. But Jesus seen something different. John chapter 8, 3 to 11 is the adultery story. See, so he without sin cast the first stone. Because Jesus seen something in her. Blind born of man. Blind. Life's over. But he heard about Jesus. And he kept calling. Those who felt like giving up before this message. I hope God was able to speak to you through this lesson. To say it ain't over. Blind born of man. Mark chapter 8. You had different stories of blind men. You had the 10 lepers. And Luke 17. Ten were healed from the uncurable disease by our Lord and Savior. And only one came back. 
to say thank you. Our human behavior. This is what we're going to touch on next week. I set up, I want to give you an intro of what we're going through. I want to kind of give you an idea of where direction where we're going. But I had to set up to show you who you are in Christ and who you are as a believer standing on the Word of God. If you stand on His Word, you have the victory. You can go through that storm. You can rise above any problem and situation if you stand on God's Word. But we also have to understand our human behavior. We're going to be talking about our human behavior. A study on our human behavior has revealed that 90% of, of the population can be classified into these four basic uh, personality types. And we're going to be talking about that. Optimistic. I'm going to go over real quick what the definition is. Uh, optimistic. Uh, don't ignore, because a person that don't ignore a problem or pretend life isn't, is perfect. They just choose to focus on what's good about the situation and what they can do to make things better. That's their main problem. They're optimistic. When the world says it's over, they say, I, I believe there's another way. I believe there's a hope somewhere. I believe, and, and what we have to do, we have to see our human personality to understand our spiritual personality. Because it is like, this is like you're talking about. These are things you're going to be witnessing. These are things you're going to be uh, going through your body and your mind, these emotional, these feelings. We want to talk about those things. Optimist has the truth confidence because they prepared Optimistic means you can put your work in. It's almost like if you had a test, you study for that test. Because you know if I put something in, something should come out. Optimistic. Pessimistic, a type of behavior, human behavior. Pessimism uh, can be des described as a tendency to think negatively. It's almost like the it is the opposite. A person who pessimistic may frequently identify and focus on the negative and the unfavorable stuff, aspects of a situation rather than concentrating on what is going right. You always want to focus on what's going wrong. Yeah, you know somebody like that. It, God done blessed them. They've been around for years. You know God done open door, and all they want to do is focus on the negative. This is a human personality that you need to know. Is this me? Is this the category I am? I'm in? Because if you can identify your area where you're weak at, God can begin to bless you through his word. He can turn those things around. He can turn a pessimistic person into an optimistic person. Can I get an amen? The next one, this is the third one, trusting. A trustworthy or or the characteristics or behavior of one person that inspires positive expectations in another person. You're trustworthy and you want to help other people. You want to inspire them. You want to inspire them with something positive. You want to lift up their expectation. You want to let them know they can make it. Um, also, research suggests that this general tendency can change over time um, period in your life, a key event in your life. It's a key event that can happen in your life that cause you to trust more or cause you to doubt. But if you got a trusting spirit, people can trust you. If they got a situation they're going through, they might be hurting, they can come to you. God will place you in the right position to be able to be that leaning post for somebody that might be in trouble. These are some of the things we need to know about our behavior. The other thing is envy. Some people just envy the other people. Envy is wanting what someone else has. You might see a neighbor with a new car or a co-worker to get a new job and desire the same. You might feel a sense of resentment towards the individual and attaining something you want but have not yet achieved. Jealousy. Jealousy is more like holding on to something you already have. Jealousy. You're jealous of somebody else. But envy is when you desire somebody else what they have. Not knowing what they, the time they put in, the work they might have put in. you envious of them. These are the type of things that believers wrestle with. Just because you get saved, they don't go away. Envious. 
The thief on the cross. He said, where, where, where is he going with this? The thief on the cross said, one of the thieves said, if you be God, get us down. Selfish. Not thinking about nobody else. The other thief, he had a change of heart. He said, this man don't deserve what we, we went through or what we got to go through or what we suffer. We deserve this. Lord, remember me. What have you done lately? Who have you encouraged? Who did the Lord place in your life felt like giving up and think it was over? I come to tell you tonight, Pastor Matt come to tell you tonight, that God wants to use us in a fashion that will help others to discover who they are in Him. Our job as believers, hear me, our job as believers is to get back on our post. If we're in church, get faithful to our sign. Encourage others to come and hear the word of God. They should have seen enough through you that would draw them in and want to find out where did you serve at? Where did you worship at? And not what it looks like. Because the world sees the news. It looks bad. It is bad. But when you give your life to Christ, I'm not going to tell you everything to come. You know, it was like a, 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 like a celebration and there's balloons and fireworks going on. But all I can tell you is, if you don't have no peace, I can tell you where you can get peace. And it's through a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So at this time, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, opportunity now is not what it looks like if you step into the kingdom. If you open your heart to accept Jesus Christ, if you let him in and let him shower down his word and his love all through you in your spirit, man, he will lift you up. He will dust you off. He will make you a new creature in him. I'm a witness. This word, when the Lord gave me, he said, let my people know it's not what it looks like. Because the thief thought it was over. And he wind up in paradise with Jesus. You can do the same thing. Don't look at the horror story. The one that said, no, nah, don't choose that. If you can't get us down, leave me alone. He chose this path. But the Bible said, you choose it then when you going to serve. It's going to be God of man. It's going to be God of things. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son. And whoso believed in him, shall not perish, but have eternal life. I'm excited about next week when we're going to be talking a little bit more about these different uh, human personalities, uh, human behaviors. And there's other human behaviors. There's three more I want to cover as well, but I'm not going to tell you right now. There's three more I want to cover, and we deal with it on a daily basis. And these are the tools. These are the things we go through. These are the motions that we have on the inside that the enemy uses to keep us away from God. I'm telling you, believers, we're under attack right now, but you don't have to fret. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We don't have to worry anymore because we have been bought with a price. When he was hanging on that cross, even though it looked bad, he said it's not what it looks like. Because at the end of my class, on the third class, you're going to see a picture with standing shine and glowing with a robe, sitting on the right hand of the Father. Because you couldn't see, but he could. And if you want to be able to see it, and you want to be able to make it to glory, all you got to do is reach out your hand and your heart unto him and come. I want to thank you for letting me in your home. I'm Pastor Gary Mack. Until we meet again, God bless you. I love you. And to God be the glory for all he has done. And one more thing, it's not what it looks like. It's not over until God says it's over. God bless you.